What up YouTube, Mr. Mac here. Welcome back to the Mac Shack for the next episode in our Lynx FC Football Manager 2020 Road to Glory. This is the chain wreck and it has been a bit of a train wreck uh, coming into this clash here. We had no games, we had 21 days off. And of course, a week out from the game, we had Valdivia injured with an ankle and Elva Fontaine injured with a calf strain. Of course, we're also missing Ethan Jolly, who's suspended for this fixture. So we do have some tactical adjustments that we need to make. We are going to pop Bouty in there. Then we're going to put Kelvin Morgan in for Valdivia. Thankfully, these are positions that we have decent cover for. We're also going to drop Jamie Sarah in there um, defensively. We're not going to be able to do much with Niall Sarah at 73% condition. So we're going to probably bring Bailey and Avalano back into the starting, or well, the squad at least, for this match. Yeah, look, this is a big one, really. Um, depending on the way that the results go, a draw between Atromatos and KLC Genk will actually secure us qualification, regardless of what happens, because we'll have a four-point buffer. Obviously, I would like to make amends being at home. I would like to make amends for the last match against Vorskla, where they uh, sort of tore us apart. Uh, they put three goals past us. I wasn't very impressed with that. Um, and they're playing quite a bit more defensively here. So um, let's look. There's no pressure. And that's, I think, the important thing for, for the squad to know. I don't want them to feel pressured coming into this game. Um, but we do need to expose their weaknesses. He, yeah, okay. Um, sure, he's a natural choice. Obviously, Valdivia, I'd rather have him available, but we'll have to, I believe, in the team selected today. I think that's probably a good response there. So, here we go then. I definitely want to be on cautious, not on attacking as much as we can. Five minutes in, we see James Hill on the ball, plays back to Jamie Serra, lobs it forwards. Danielson Carvalho actually gets onto that one. Sean De Los Santos now plays it out to Tyler Bury. Bury Tries to skip past his man, sends a cross in. Kelvin Morgan opens the scoring on the six-minute mark and Lynx FC a one goal to the good here. A dream start, so true. An absolute dream start for Lynx FC. Tyler Bury maybe now starting to show what he's capable of out on the right wing there. That was a pinpoint cross to the head of Kelvin Morgan. And we are... One shot, one goal. Let's have some more of that, please, lads. 15 minutes in, no further highlights. I mean, that puts us top of the group. It also puts us through, or well, equal top of the group. Obviously, we'd need to get a few more goals past these guys to go top, uh, top. Hill misses a challenge there, but we've got enough coverage. And that one just has too much on it and goes over the bar. Of course, we may have, you know, waved the red flag in front of the ball here. Uh, though half an hour gone, we're still quite comfortable. Comfortable. Vorskla with a corner and Kachenko just slots it over the head of the player marking the front post there. Um, and an equalizing goal it is. So we're going to ask for a little bit of passion from the boys here because that is just a wide open header. I don't know who it is standing on the line there, but they didn't really make much of an attempt to, you know, block it, clear it, anything like that. So, however, it's not like we're behind. We're going in to halftime at one all. Apparently, they've had a perfect half. They have not conceded any fouls. Um, they've also had 65% possession, which is really good for them. Boys, you've been excellent. Go out there and express yourselves. Let's get some revenge. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, that one really came out of nowhere. And we are, however, we're back. Bouty with a ball sends something forwards. We don't actually 
make that count. Unfortunately, Sherbach has it in the middle of the park now for Vorskla. And they bring it down the left wing again. Um, swinging it inside to Pazankov. <laughs> That's the one. Had to think about it for a little bit. Um, Bibic passes back to Juanma Juan to Pazankov. And he's just drawing Lynx FC players out of position here. We do get the steal, thankfully. And now Larson runs onto it. Julian Larson hasn't scored in a number of matches, but he makes no mistake there. He slots it into the top corner, over the top of the outstretched arms of the keeper. And just the pressure there really was what made the difference. The Nielsen Carvalho with a brilliant ball to release Larson and just showing his composure there to get the finish. And we're up 2-1 now. We've gone defensive. Apparently, oh no, that's them that's uninterested. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I'd like them all to be uninterested. And I'd also like us to be in possession of the ball here. But we'll see how we go. Pazankov plays it back to Koba. Koba now on the ball. Uh, plays it to Bibic. Pazankov probably looking down the left wing here. Yes, for the run of Juan Ma. Back to Bibic. Back to Pazankov. They're back to the middle of the park now with Koba. Koba is going to play out to Azarov, uh, who did cause us a lot of trouble in the other leg. Now, Maziak. I, I don't really know how we stop that, I'll be honest. Um, just quality passing. We weren't really closing down. They had a lot of space, and he just let one fly. And honestly... Part of me wants to say they got lucky there. I think they did get a little bit lucky. Um, however, we still did leave them open and in that position to be able to do that. Jamie Bozio is going to come in for Jamie Serra uh, as our first change. And then I think our second change is going to be um, Isaac Vernet coming on for Craig Galliano, who hasn't had the best of games out there on the wing and is also getting a little bit tired. Now, we have a game against Europa Point, I think, in about four days' time. Not that I'm really considering that game, but as you see there, Galliano's just missed a challenge. Uh, Bouty gets up with a good header. Tyler Bury, unfortunately, can't win the ball there. So, Juan Ma has the ball again, plays it to Koba in the middle of the park. And this is looking a little bit like deja vu here from the Vorskla squad. Um... They start to pass the ball around now, and it is getting a little bit more challenging for us. Galliano is cooked. He's not making any effort to close down, and Kachenko thankfully misses that header. We need some more from the boys here. We need them to refocus. We need them to be ready to go. And I tell you what, with 15 minutes to play, we're going to throw caution to the wind. We're going to chuck... Jaden Parody in, and we're going to go attacking again, looking for a goal, looking for a win. Bibic with the ball, and it's turned into pinball in the box there, and Chesnikov has scored. Unfortunately, again, Vorskla put three past us. Genk are also beating uh, or winning their fixture, which means that we are not safe yet. Uh, we would really love another goal to give us something. I don't think it's going to come from this highlight, unfortunately. Um, but we'll see. We may get an interception or a good challenge. The players just seem to be completely out on their feet. They're not closing down to the intensity that we'd like. Um, and Vorskler really are running all over us, just passing the ball around us and making us look a bit like training cones there. A great run into the box. We do get a foot in. Unf <sighs> That's a bad, bad way to concede. That is a bad way to concede, especially so late on now. We go two goals behind and potentially even another one here coming. Juan Ma going to send a crossover potentially no plays to Machenko Machenko tries to send the crossover but Denilson Carvalho gets onto it we may have something on the break here Larson I don't even know where that pass was going 
Okay. So things uh, probably got a little bit more serious now. Uh, do or die clash coming up with KRC Gank, who maybe have found their form after struggling through the first half of the campaign. Uh, surely this will be the last play before the full-time whistle. And it is unfortunately a disappointing collapse from Lynx FC, having a 2-1 lead early in the second half to concede three goals and be, yeah, 4-2 loss. Really not great. Um, not a great performance. We may get something out of this Jaden Parody run. No. The ball goes out of play with a fantastic tackle there. And possibly Vorskler just beyond us at this point in time. We do have to remember, though, as Kelvin Morgan goes agonizingly close, we do have to remember we had three key players out in this fixture. Um, so that's something, you know, that we can probably take. Bradley Bander is furious in goal. Um, can't fault your effort, boys. Our defense did not have the best game. I will say that 6.2 for James Hill, 6.3 for Bounty. Um, not ideal. 6.4 for Vinay once he came on. Yeah, look, we certainly struggled everywhere other than the front two, and it was a disappointing collapse. I do not remember VAR being a factor, however. Um, anyway, you will see here. We've got the game against Europa Point, and then we've got KRC Genk on the 9th of December. So it's about two weeks away. Um, we are going to be missing some of our key players there as well, but hopefully we have enough to get across the line. Um, we do need to get past Europa Point first. So I'm going to go play that game, and then I will see you uh, on the eve of the Genk fixture. Talk soon. And we are back. And this... News article certainly sums up the way that I'm feeling right now. Qualification on the line at Luminous Arena. This is a one-and-done playoff game. It might be the last group stage match, but it is very much a playoff game for us here. If we lose, we are out of the Europa Conference League. If we win, we're through to the first knockout round. Now, some other stuff that has happened very excitingly. We have uh, upgraded the youth and training facilities that work has been finished. So we're now at a basic level for that. We've also um, convinced the chairman to um, spend $1.4 million to upgrade the club's training facilities again. And we also managed to grab an upgrade to our junior recruiting and our youth scouting or youth recruitment and junior coaching. So we've got good academy coaching, adequate recruitment. And then you can see our basic facilities there as well. So we are moving up in the world, which is lovely. Um, it would be lovely if this continued here. We have a two-point buffer. A draw would be enough. A loss would not be enough to keep us alive here. This is the squad that we're going with. Bozio comes in to replace James Hill. Probably the only interesting thing. Valdivia and Elva Fontaine are still out injured. So here we go. Looks like a pretty packed house there. Um, I'm going to relax them. I'm going to give them the opportunity to go out motivated and relaxed. We're going to see how that goes for us. We've prepared in a professional manner. He's not ready. We don't want to rush him back. The goalkeepers have weaknesses. We've beaten him already. We certainly hope Kelvin Morgan can keep his run of form going. And I don't know why we're on attacking. Danielson Carvalho sends a ball into the box. Rosovsky picks it up and goes on a little bit of a run. Mola Day Dali almost puts Gank in the lead less than three minutes into this match. And we've gone defensive. Straight away, Brad Powell with a header to clear the ball from the corner, and we're in a good place now. Another throw here, Danielson Carvalho. Jamie Bozio cannot get the cross in. Zagrova manages to close him down, and it is a foot race now. 
I'm not sure why he chose to shoot from that far out. I'm sure glad he did and that he missed. We have struggled so far. Great ball by Bounty there to pick out Julian Larson. Uh, and almost a good ball by Clinton there. But again, Genk come at us on the break. Um, they're going to turn and play back to Merle. And he's going to come down the right wing back into Rosovsky. And then into Nigren. And then across to Lodi. Lodi shoots from way outside. And Bradley Bender gets up to tip it over the bar. <laughs> there was a goal that he conceded against Europa Point that wasn't ideal. And I did get distracted and not even tell you about that result. So while we're waiting for the next highlight here, we'll talk about that. We beat Europa Point 4-1. It was comprehensive. Really not an issue there at all. Um, wow. Was that a Rabona? Or some sort of weird little move there? Did he, like... How did he play that pass? Yeah. He rebonded it. And they've scored. And that means we're out. So we need to do something about that, boys. Let's go. Uh, we're going cautious here. A 4-1 win against Europa Point's not going to do anything for us here. Um... What do we got? Beati sends the free kick over. We lose the ball again. Tyler Bury can't get it back for us. Um, Mola Daly skips past him. Beati does get the challenge in, though. Danielson Carvalho picks it up. Brad Power now sends a long ball over. Morgan looks for a flick on into Julian Larson's path, and it doesn't pay off. Nigren now plays the ball out to the left wing for Genk. It comes back to Nigren, back to the center circle with Hrosovsky, and then into Hainan and Mela on the right wing now, coming down to the edge of the box, sends the cross in. Teodorzic scores 2 0. We're away from home. This is going to happen. It shouldn't be happening. We should be there. Kelvin Morgan gets a booking. We're now two goals behind. We need to score twice. We actually, I'd love to get a highlight where we don't just kick the ball away. Um, unfortunately, this is not going to be that time. Unless Van de Voort just completely misses the ball there. But unfortunately, he doesn't do that either. So, that is a huge pass, and somehow we're not actually going to get onto that, and the goalkeeper almost gets an assist by kicking it from one box to the other. Guys, come on. What are we doing here? All right, it's half time. We've had six shots. We've had 40% possession. It's not bad. But I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to say, look, you've been poor. Because you have been. You know, I, I don't want to beat around the bush here, guys. We haven't even given up, like, we haven't given up goals to clear-cut chances. We've just been poor. And they've scored against us because we haven't kept possession of the ball. And yet again, we don't keep possession of the ball. And yet again, they score. And I don't really know where to go from here. Um... Because it looks like we're, we're going to miss qualifying for the next stage here. Um, highlight straight from kickoff. Could be a great thing. Could be a very, very shattering thing for us here. Um, in this case, it looks like it's going to be the latter. Because we've just given the ball away again. Playing a 40-yard ball forwards. Why don't I go look at this? And then let's say, look, let's bring the passing directness the shorter passing. We'll play some higher higher tempo uh, ball and let's just bang some shots in. We'll see what happens. I think that's the first time in this entire playthrough that I've actually accessed that menu. Um, we'll see what it does for us as Larson skips past one defender and tries to place it into the middle of the net. Uh, 
doesn't really do any much of anything. Okay, Bury's going to come out for Jaden Parody. He is a man that has won us games on his own in the past. Clinton is also going to come out for De Los Santos. Uh, we're going to put some fresh legs in the midfield. Jamie Bozio has really let us down there on the left wing. Um, not what we needed, really, when we put him in to, to make up for James Hill. So James Hill's going to come in. We're making all of our subs right here. We are demanding more. We're going to close him down. We're going to go attacking because we've got 30, 25 minutes, 20 minutes now. Um, come on, guys. Let's do something with the ball, please. 15 minutes to go. We're going very attacking now. 10 minutes left. We certainly haven't made a bad account for us. Okay, we've given up three clear-cut chances. I don't know what I was on about before. Um, they've scored from all of their clear-cut chances. Why don't we just give them another one, hey? Yeah. Let's, let's go down 4 nil because that looks so much nicer than 3 nil. Boys, um, don't feel too aggrieved because clearly the way that we've played here, we haven't deserved to make it through to the next stage of this competition. So we're going to take a bow, say thank you very much, and drop out. Missing the next stage by one point. Having said that, we scored five goals in six games. So, yeah. Look, it would have been nice to win, but it wasn't to be. And I, I, I think that's really all we can say. Um... The first venture into a group stage in Europe, um, we did pretty well. Disappointing that, <laughs> oh, that's the unallocated match prize money. I was going to say, we only get $35,000 for doing that. Um, that's pretty poor. A humiliating defeat. Supporters are far from happy. Yep, look, we weren't as bad as the scoreline, but I'd rather not dwell on the result. That's true. Um, we have to do better in the future. There's no substitute for hard work. That guy had a good solid game, unfortunately, for us. Uh, we'll see if they actually do distribute any other prize money to us here. We're going to cancel the day off. Apparently, everyone's really happy with that. So, good. They all know that we have to do better, and, and that's, I think, important. We've made $7 million in profit this season, so I really think we can't, we can't say it's a bad thing, regardless of how we're going with stuff. Jamie Bozio, not good enough, mate, as a as a team leader. Galliano, I'm glad to see you've been enjoying your training, mate. Um, I might just hit this one more time and see if we can get anything in terms of prize money news um, out of this competition now that we have been formally eliminated. Um, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be it for us with the Europa Conference League for this season. I'm still pretty impressed that we took it all the way to the last group stage, stage match and hopefully it's something that's going to really give us um, a boost in the coefficients and in the rankings come the end of the season. Um, it'd be nice to, to get some improvement there when it comes to that. There's nothing in the inbox, so we're going to take a look at the schedule here. There's really not a whole lot happening between now and the end of the season. Uh, well, <laughs> the end of the first half of the season anyway. Um, if we take a look here, uh, sixth place, well, seventh place is on eight points. We're on 21 points. There's three games left. They can't catch us. So we probably won't, you probably won't see me again before the end of the season. We'll probably play through this to the league split. Um, I think the league split clearly happens before the Rock Cup quarterfinal. So you'll be able to see more about that in the future. But at this stage, uh, we will come back an unknown amount of time into the future, but it will be after the second, of, uh, the fifth of February, twenty twenty-two. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching this episode. Um, if you enjoyed, please leave a like. And uh, yeah, look, we're doing okay. The board's feeling pretty happy with us, so we're gonna go play some matches off camera. Hopefully, keep our keep our streak alive and stay on top of Lincoln Red Imps, who have had another draw. Uh, against College Europa, so that's positive signs for us going forwards. And uh, yeah, we will speak to you soon.